So far, we have our JavaScript application and the action. The next part to implement is the reducer. But first, let us recollect what we know about reducers. Reducers specify how the application's state changes in response to actions sent to the store. So actions only describe what happened, but don't describe how the application's state changes. Reducers are in charge of that. In terms of code, a reducer is a function that accepts state and action as arguments and returns the next state of the application. In its simplest form, you can represent a reducer as previous state and action returning a new state. So, previous state, comma action, returning new state. Let's implement this for our cake shop. What you can notice is that we need two arguments to write a reducer function. The state of the application before making any change and the action. Now we already have our action defined. So what is remaining is to determine what our application state looks like. As a shopkeeper, all I want to keep track of is the number of cakes on the shelf. So our state is a simple numeric value. But if you recollect the first principle of Redux, it mentions that your application state has to be represented by a single object. So for this example, the state is going to be an object that has a property called number of cakes which is a numeric value. const initial state is equal to an object with a property called number of cakes. And let's go with the assumption that when you open the shop in the morning, there are 10 cakes on the shelf. Now we can pass this initial state as the default value for the state parameter in the reducer. So const reducer is equal to an arrow function and this receives state is equal to initial state as the default value and an action. So when the application starts, the initial state of the app is passed in as an argument to the reducer function. All right, we now have both arguments ready to be used. The remaining part is implementing the function body that will return the new state of the application based on the current state and the action. So within the function body, we add a switch case where the expression is the action type. So action dot type. If the action type is cake underscore ordered, so case cake underscore ordered, we return the new state of the application as a new object where the number of cakes is current number of cakes minus one. If there is an action which we haven't accounted for, we simply return the state as is. And that is pretty much your reducer function. It is a pure function that accepts state and action as arguments and returns the next state of the application. Now what we have written here works fine for our example. But in reality, your state object might contain more than one property. For example, another property set to zero. To handle such a scenario, it is always safe to first create a copy of the state object and then change only the properties that need to. To make a copy, we use the spread operator. We are basically asking the reducer to first make a copy of the state object and then 
only update the number of cakes property. If there are other properties like another property, they would remain unchanged. I'll remove this as it was required only to convey a point. All right, with that, we have completed another part of our puzzle. The last remaining bit is implementing the Redux store. Once we implement that, we should also be able to connect all the individual pieces together. So in the next video, let's take a look at the Redux store.